Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up on the news, the White House is looking for more ideas to further lower costs as we head into the winter months. Plus, a special event today is helping keep Lincoln residents in their homes and their lights on. But first... We're all in the same boat. We're all together. And the squeeze comes as, as the weather gets colder and colder. Local organizations are helping to supply families with food for the holidays. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this Friday evening. Thanksgiving right around the corner, but not everyone is able to afford everything needed to make their holiday meals. This morning, the Catholic Social Services of Southern Nebraska, along with the Catholic Diocese of Lincoln, gave out Thanksgiving supplies to those in need. Channel 8's Matthew Mitleider has more details in our top story tonight. The Catholic Social Services of Southern Nebraska and the Catholic Diocese of Lincoln handed out bags of Thanksgiving supplies on Friday morning. They said over 150 families were given turkeys, hams, stuffing, mashed potatoes, and other sides. We all know this is a really difficult time economically and uh, with the inflation and everything. So we, as Catholic, in Catholic Social Services, we really want to reach out to those people who are in need. St. John's Catholic Church here in Lincoln have bagged up these beautiful bags uh, with artwork on them and it's got everything they need to make a big Thanksgiving meal for their families. Bishop Conley said with temperatures dropping and utility and electric bills rising, it can be harder for people to afford groceries this time of year. Executive Director of the Catholic Social Services of Southern Nebraska, Katie Patrick, said they do this event every year and those in need of meals can sign up at the beginning of November and December to receive a meal. We know that there are a number of different places across the city where families can access low cost or free food, but oftentimes that food does not have the proper nutrition. At the CSS food market, we really try to keep it stocked with, um, with food that, that helps them have a well-balanced diet. She said the important part of all this is creating encounters where people can learn about the issues facing the Lincoln community and helping to serve those that are vulnerable. Officials say food security is a big problem for some in Nebraska and they see new faces every day. So they want to help fill the gaps and make everyone feel welcome. Yes, we provide the food, but we're also just giving them the dignity. So we're, we're raising the bar, you know, giving them the dignity of being able to shop themselves and have someone to talk to and share recipes with. and. It's just a joy to see that the excitement and the appreciation for people getting the food that um, is lacking from their pantries. Catholic Social Services says they're supplied completely by donations and are always open to helping those in the community that need food or winter clothing. We also want just people to enjoy this holiday of Thanksgiving, you know, to be able to be with their families. That's the important thing is to be with their families and to have a nice meal and to give thanks even for the little that we have. Reporting in Lincoln, Matthew Mitleider, Channel 8 News. And if you'd like to help out, we have a link with more information on our website, klknTV.com. And today, the contributions of those who come together to help those in need were also recognized. The Lincoln Homeless Coalition celebrated its 23rd annual recognition event. Ten awards were given to individuals and organizations who volunteer their time to end hunger and homelessness here in Lincoln. Certificates of recognition were also given to another 24 individuals. Two award recipients say it's all about working together. Just very rewarding that the whole community works together as a team, and that's what this was all about today. I think that with the Lincoln Homeless Coalition, everybody comes together. Receiving one of the Community Impact uh, Awards was uh, really meaningful for us, being a newer organization, to see that, hey, we are starting to make a difference for the populations in need around Lincoln. Organizers said they were happy to celebrate in person today after a two-year hiatus. Speaking of helping people, the city had a special event today and a lot of people mm -hmm. showed up. A huge line of folks waited to receive financial aid from the Urban Development Department. The goal here is to help with rent and utility bills. Officials say the turnout was greater than expected and they're extending the ways for people to apply for that assistance. Our goal here is to uh, provide opportunities for people to leave if they if we can't process them to provide contact information so that we can have staff get back um, and contact them and tr process their application after this event's um, concluded this afternoon. 
We'll have more community resources if you are in need of financial assistance for your rent and utilities and all that information coming up in our newscast at 6 o'clock. The People City Mission is hosting its 12th annual Starry Nights Christmas Tree Festival at Gateway Mall. You'll be able to see 16 very nicely decorated trees. If you've been there in the past, you know how nice this is. There's also going to be a holiday market, a place to drop off letters to Santa Claus, and some live entertainment. Now it opens Wednesday before Thanksgiving, again out at the Gateway Mall, and it's going to also be open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday after Thanksgiving. This is the mission's largest fundraiser of the year. Well, a new chapter today in the battle over a housing project between the city of Lincoln and a Native American group. This afternoon, a Lancaster County District Judge heard both sides of the legal battle. Now, no decision was made today. Prior to hearing, prior to the hearing, Nisquite community members raised a teepee in front of the courthouse to hold an intertribal gathering. A part of the land where the development will take place near Wilderness Park is considered sacred to them. We'll have much more on this story at 6 o'clock. The city of Seward is warning residents of a scam involving your utility bills. Someone is calling people and threatening to shut off their utilities if they don't receive some type of payment. Well, city leaders want you to know this is 100% a scam. The city will always notify you via mail or place a notice on your door if you're behind on any payments. All right, some crime news now. A Grand Island woman is in custody for her involvement in an elder financial exploitation case. 65-year-old Constance Reimers was arrested for several charges. It's part of an investigation involving the FBI Elder Justice Task Force from San Diego County in California. Authorities have identified some victims, but they believe Reimers has exploited many more. If you have any information, contact Hall County deputies. Also in Grand Island, a woman faces drug charges and assaulting a police officer. They say Trista a weasel threw items at authorities and striking one officer. It happened last night, they say. They also say they found some cocaine. Police showed up because the landlord wanted her removed. Time now for a check of our chilly forecast with Chief Meteorologist Rusty Dawkins. But Rusty, there's some sunshine out there at least. <laughs> Glass half full. I can appreciate that very much. Uh, yeah, it's been hard to figure out uh, good things to say about the last few days. Uh, and we're going to do this at least for one more day and then things turn around. But right now we've got clear skies for much of the state, just a few clouds in the panhandle, and that's about it. Overall, just a quiet and sunny day at least. Uh, the sun going down right now in Beatrice. Schoen's roofing showing uh, a pretty good looking sunset, which uh, Nebraska has plenty of. Te 25 degrees though, uh, chilly sunset temperature in Beatrice, 21 in Nebraska City, 26 in Hebron. The airport in Lincoln is 26. So just about everybody in the middle and upper 20s. And uh, the wind isn't helping, but it's not bad. It was a little worse yesterday, but it's out of the west and northwest at 5 to 10 or 15 miles per hour. So the wind chill is at least in the teens. I'm not seeing any single digits out there right now, but that will change as we head through the overnight. Uh, speaking of overnight, temperatures drop, I think, to around 20 degrees. And in fact, I think we'll drop quickly into the middle teens and then bump right back up to around 20 uh, by 10 o'clock and midnight and then just kind of hover there. And uh, that's okay. At least we're not going to drop off too much further. But the wind chill, of course, is going to be an issue. We'll see single digits and lower teens as we head through the overnight into early tomorrow morning. One more cold day, just one. Then we get back to normal, or at least kind of. We'll talk more about that in a couple of minutes. All right, we'll check in soon, Rusty. Thank you. In national news now, President Biden is bringing in top business executives from across the nation to highlight the administration's efforts against inflation. This comes amid growing concerns about out-of-control prices and a possible recession. ABC's M. Wynn is in Washington with the very latest. At the White House today, President Joe Biden meeting with executives from large U.S. companies and labor leaders, including Ford Motor CEO Jim Farley and Kaiser Permanente Chairman Greg Adams. I've called together a group of labor leaders and business leaders to discuss progress in building the economy from the bottom up and the middle out. The president touting the Inflation Reduction Act with many provisions going into effect next year, including capping monthly insulin co-pays at $35 for seniors on Medicare and extending Affordable Care Act tax credits. Biden also pointing to signs of slowing inflation. Last week, the Labor Department saying prices are up 7.7 percent, historically high but better than expected. Our approach, I believe, is working. The economy grew at 2.6 percent last quarter while inflation started to slow and unemployment started to stay low. 
The Treasury Department, after facing criticism that no electric vehicle assembled outside the U.S. will qualify for the federal EV tax credit policy, now issuing new guidance. And although Biden has said his administration has increased U.S. manufacturing jobs, union leaders concerned that electric vehicles will require less labor to build. This meeting comes on the heels of the midterm elections, where Democrats performed better than expected despite the economy being number one on voters' minds. Today, the Biden administration filed an appeal with the Supreme Court over its student loan forgiveness program, asking justices to lift the pause brought on by a federal court ruling earlier this week. M1, ABC News, Washington. Also tonight, some inflation good news. Many workers can expect to receive substantial pay raises in 2023. With the new year, employers say they're planning to increase their salary budgets by 4.6 percent. That's the highest expected annual increase in 15 years. Of course, the reason is because of the rising cost of living and the tight labor market. But with inflation still at 7.7 percent, workers will still see their buying power diminish. Now to sports, a big night for the Parkview Christian football team. They're the only Lincoln area school to make it to state. Tonight, they play Pawnee City for the Class D6 title. The Patriots are 10 and 1, and this is the first time they've gone to the state championship game in school history. Now the game starts at 7 o'clock tonight. It's being played in Kearney. Our Philip Katafimo is there. He's going to have a live report for us at 6 o'clock. Good luck to them. Mm -hmm. Still to come on the news tonight, it's being called an historic moment for those suffering from type 1 diabetes. The first ever therapy to delay the disease is now FDA approved. The latest on that story after the break.
We are less than two weeks away from the grand opening of a new medical clinic here in town. CHI Health will open a new family health center on December 1st near 40th and Yankee Hill Road. It will be focused on easy access to everything under one roof, including a full lab, x-rays and mammograms. It will also be easy for testing. In the pandemic, in order to keep our patients safe um, and to keep us safe, we did a lot of drive up testing and drive through um, patient care. So we have a place built just specifically for this purpose. So if a patient needs a COVID-19 swab, for example, or another swab, um, they can drive through um, this area and have the testing done, potentially even pharmacy pickup in a drive through setting. CHI tells us this clinic is a first of its kind in Lincoln. It also includes primary and priority care, orthopedics and behavioral care as well. Well, some big news today in the fight against type 1 diabetes. A new therapy to delay the onset of the disease has been approved by the FDA. In tonight's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has more on the therapy and how it might help patients. It's being called an historic moment for those suffering from type 1 diabetes. The first ever therapy to delay the disease is now FDA approved for patients. We've never had any treatment to do that, uh, despite testing many, many different things that have all not worked. Type 1 diabetes is a genetic disease where a person's pancreas doesn't make insulin or won't make enough. The new monoclonal antibody will be marketed under the brand name Zeal. It comes in a single 14-day dose of infusions that each last 30 to 60 minutes. On average, the, the delay of development of type 1 was two years, but there were those that went longer than that. And as we get more and more data, this may prevent the development even longer than two years, which is really exciting. The therapy is thought to work by turning down the body's misdirected attack on its own insulin producing cells. Protecting those cells may buy patients more time before they become dependent on insulin to manage their condition. Imagine, you know, a nine year old kid with diabetes that has to have their finger pricked multiple times a day and receive multiple insulin injections. Sometimes their parents chasing them around to do this and now think of not having to do that for two whole years. And this therapy is thought to be just the beginning in the fight against type 1 diabetes. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Now, your Storm Alert team forecast with Chief Meteorologist Rusty Dawkins. So if you're headed to the game tomorrow, first off, uh, it should be a great game. Uh, and every time we play Wisconsin, it's just I really, really want Nebraska to beat Wisconsin. Second off, uh, dress in layers. It's going to be a cold one. Temperatures, you know, not terrible, 28, 30, and 33. But that wind, if you're somewhere where the wind is blowing all the time, it, it, you'll feel it. And then uh, mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. So if you're in the shade, like right, right there and right there, much colder, but if you're in the sunshine it, and out of the wind, I'm looking for I'm glass half full. I'm trying. There's a little bit of a wind right now. No, this is out of the south now. This is an interesting thing that's going on. Uh, the Penner Bathing Solutions, uh, these, uh, this camp showing us these flags that are moving. Uh, the wind is out of the south. That, that is going to help keep our temperatures from dropping too far too fast. But it's still cold out there. 23 degrees in Aurora, 23 in New York, 25 in Grand Island. 23 in Wahoo, Columbus at 24. So we're generally in the 20s. I think we're going to drop fairly as soon as the sun goes all the way down and, and the, the wind dies off just a little bit. I think the temperatures will drop kind of quickly and then they're going to bounce right back up. Uh, the, right now the wind is out of the west and trying to come out of the south. So once these winds die down and then pick up a little more out of the south, I think things will warm up. But it, uh, we do have a wind chill that's anywhere from 10 to 15 or 16 degrees. 16, one of the warmer wind chills in Lincoln, Wahoo at 13, Columbus at 15 degrees and a couple of 11s here in Omaha and Nebraska City. And we're not alone, everybody in the teens uh, for wind chills, which is actually a, a, a marked improvement for North Central and Western Nebraska. They were about 10 to 20 degrees below zero last night. Very clear sky out there, not a whole lot going on. Uh, I think tonight temperatures will drop, like I said, quickly to around 15, 16 degrees, but then warm up. Now this is 11 p.m. I think we'll be in the middle and upper teens and lower 20s. A few clouds start to stream in here and there. Notice the temperature kind of wavering between 20 and 25 degrees. I think about six or seven o'clock in the morning will be close to 20. So 
it, it, we've seen worse lately. And then we'll slowly warm up. The temperature is getting to around 25 degrees by kickoff, uh, 11 a.m. So if you're going to be out and about, uh, if you're doing some early morning tailgating, going to be a chilly one. Clouds clear out by half time. Temperatures very close to 30 degrees. And that's about as warm as we're going to get, I think between 30 and 35 degrees uh, by Saturday afternoon with mostly sunny skies. I'll say 33 in Lincoln. We'll go around 30 in uh, Seward and York, 33s in uh, Hebron, Fairbury and Beatrice. Again, this is about 20 degrees below average. And that's average, 50 degrees. So we get back to it on Sunday. That is going to feel like a heat wave. 50, 51, 52, and 50. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. As we head through Thursday, I think we're going to see a little, uh, might see a little mixed precipitation, possibly lingering into Friday. And that's when that next game comes along. Saturday and Sunday, temperatures in the upper 40s and lower 50s. Uh, so a little up and down over the next uh, few days, but uh, I think the coldest uh, that we that cold weather that we've seen over the last several days is finally coming to an end. The cold snap is about over. Temperatures back to normal by Sunday and most of next week. Yeah, it's nice to get back to normal, right? <laughs> We're hardly ever normal. I know, uh, especially around here. So we'll take what we can get. All right, thank you, Rusty. Uh, now to a road alert. We wanted to tell you about if you live in the area of 48th and South, the city is closing two roads on Sunday for LES to remove overhead power lines and utility poles. Look. The closures include South 48th Street from Sum Sumner to Glade Streets from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Also South Street from 47th to 49th Streets from 8 to 10 a.m. Access to homes and businesses will not be allowed in these areas until the work is complete. The sidewalk on the east side of South 48th Street will also be closed. Now for a look at Wall Street, a positive day today. The Dow gaining just over 200. NASDAQ, though, only up about a point. S&P adding 19 points. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Tonight, a historic...
And finally tonight, we have an update on the dogs confiscated north of Malcolm earlier this week. Capital Humane Society has already started the transformation process. Here are some before and after photos of the dogs. And a big thanks goes to Vanity Fur and Doggy Do's Grooming for donating their time and services to make these pups feel better. Look at that oh. one. That is some cute stuff. You know, I want to let you know, as of now, these dogs are not up for adoption. Look at those eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, because they're going to be held at the Humane Society for the duration of the judicial process in this case. So we'll keep you updated because uh, I know a lot of good-hearted people here in Lincoln mm -hmm. would uh, take these some of these dogs home in a heartbeat. Yeah, there were 28 of them total that came mm -hmm. from that property. So once they're up for adoption, a yeah. lot of a lot of homes that will be needed. You bet. All right, let's get a uh, final Friday night forecast check uh, with Rusty. Yeah, we've got uh, temperatures that are going to be uh, chilly for one more day. Uh, and then we start to get back to normal. We should be around 50, but tomorrow will be closer to 30. But we're kind of used to this uh, already. 33 degrees, a cold day, the wind chill in the teens, a northwest wind 10 to 25 miles per hour. And then as we get to Sunday, much better. 50, 50, 51, 52, and then 50. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, all of those temperatures pretty close to normal. We take a little bit of a dip as we head through the Thanksgiving weekend, maybe some light mixed precipitation on Thanksgiving Day, then warming back up next weekend. All right, thank you, Rusty, and thank you all for joining us. World News is next. See you back here at 6. With the Channel 8 News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. We only do one thing at Comfort Made Mattress Factory. Handcraft the highest quality mattress possible. It's backed by a lifetime comfort guarantee. Come see us. Closed captioning on Channel 8 Eyewitness News is brought to you by Christensen Hearing Analytics.